All right, so this is my review of the Astro A50 Generation 4 headset. I've owned the third. I tried owning the first and didn't like it very much, but I did like my third mostly. It did have some problems that, but I liked it enough that I decided to go with the Gen 4, but it had problems enough that I decided to go with the Gen 4. So. It was not a perfect headset by any means, but I did like a lot of what Astro has done with it, so I decided to give the Generation 4 a shot. The sound quality, first of all, the sound quality is uh, very good for a wireless gaming headset. I really liked it. Um, I also like listening to music on it just fine. These are not audiophile headphones, but they're not marketed as such. They're, they're a wireless gaming headset, so keep that in mind. They are a little pricey for that, but I'll go into that a little later. The adjustments on here are really good and solid. I feel like the construction of these is, is really good. Like it flexes a decent amount, but it doesn't feel creaky or anything. Uh, it feels good on my head. So, you know, I can move around a lot. It doesn't move around, you know, bend over, do stuff. Uh, you know, no problems there. The, uh, it's got the paddles on the side here for game and uh, voice. Sorry about camera quality, you probably can't see that very well, but it does have the mixer paddles there. Um, you've got the switches back here for power, and then it's got the, um, the surround switch and the equalizer button, or surround button and equalizer button, those are both buttons. It also has a microphone that does flip up to uh, mute, which is nice. Let's see, uh, oh, it also has replaceable uh, ear cups. They're just magnetic, really like that feature. I did end up getting the, I, I think they call it the Pro Kit, which replaces the ear cups with more, uh, with a more sound isolating design and leather, which I've, I've really enjoyed. Uh, let's see, oh, and the volume uh, knob is down here. This is an infinite scroll volume knob, which I really like. Uh, it does only adjust the volume on the headset separately from Windows, which I also like. So I just crank Windows up to 100% and then use this. Um, so again, overall, I've been pretty happy with it. The, the, one of the biggest failings of the Generation 3 was two things for me. It was the base station, which was almost impossible to drop the headset in and get to charge. So the way this charges with the base station is it's, it's a wireless charger. So. It's not like a, a magnetic coil, like a, uh, like a Qi charger, like might be on your phone, but it does have these little metal contacts on the bottom that line up uh, on the base station and charge the headset. In theory, it's a great idea. The Generation 3, though, had a huge problem with alignment, like getting it in the right sweet spot. The Generation 4 base station is better. Uh, watch the unboxing video if you want to see that a little closer. I, I really don't want to unhook it right now for this video to just show it in two seconds. So um, anyway, so that was one of my biggest complaints, right? Was the was the charger? The they've mostly fixed that in the generation four, but I do have to fiddle with it a little bit still sometimes. Still miles ahead of the generation three, they've mostly got it figured out. I hope the generation five just has it completely nailed down. Um, the other issue I had with the Generation 3 was the wireless dropping out from time to time. So once in a while, the wireless signal would drop out, I would say every two hours or so for less than a minute, but it was long enough that it was really annoying and it seemed to get worse over time. I don't know if that was a bad firmware update that happened along the way that I just didn't notice or what, but it was, it was really bad towards the end. Um, almost unusable and unfortunately the headset was out of warranty um, so you know I, I gave it to my brother and best wishes to him <laughs> so again they've they've fixed both those problems it seems I have not had my generation 4 headset drop out once they did change this to 2.4 gigahertz which does help go through walls etc uh, and that might be part of the reason it doesn't drop out as much I don't know but it really has done much better in that department. So let me look at my notes real quick. It does use either USB or optical input. Um, you'll probably wanna use the, uh, 
the USB on a computer because you can it, it creates two different sound devices. It creates a game sound device and a voice sound device. The advantage of that is you can make the game sound device your default device and that'll be all your game sounds, all your Windows sounds, all that. Then you would assign the voice sound device to something like Discord. And what that lets you do is when you use these paddles on the side here, if you click the voice paddle, for example, it'll make Discord louder than your game and kind of lower the volume of the game every click. Very nice when you don't want to mess around with your game settings or Windows sound settings every time you jump in and just want to chat with people and be able to hear them clearly over the sound of the game. Part of the reason I really like these headphones. I think Astro's version of that is really good. So speaking of that, um, oh, and the optical port, I believe decodes Dolby Digital, maybe DTS sound. I don't know that 100%. So please look that up before you get it. In my case, um, I have used it for Dolby Digital and it worked great. Uh, the, the sound, the surround sound feature on here. So Astro does have the button to do kind of the wide field thing again. I've never liked those very much on these wireless gaming headsets at least. It sounds too echoey to me. It, it makes it feel like they put you in some sort of like concrete arena instead of surround sound. So on this one specifically, they included a code for Dolby Atmos on Windows 10. That is the way to go with this. That is so much better than this stupid button mode. So, you know, use the code, install uh, the Dolby Atmos feature, and then enable it on your computer. Um, you right click your sound device and, and enable spatial sound and the Dolby Atmos. It's really good. I really liked it. Works on most games, it seems like. Uh, I think it creates a virtual 7.1 surround device as part of the reason it works with most games. So it's it's really good. Can't, can't complain about that. I, I think Astro got it right with just giving up on trying to make their own thing and just use a more established product like Dolby Atmos. So good on them for, for throwing in the towel when I think they needed to. Uh, wireless, the range was really good on wireless too. So just as a quick note on that, the range, super awesome. I was able to go outside my house for uh, just a foot or two, but even then was miles ahead of what the other, what the gener generation three could do. So I can go completely upstairs and still get a signal in my house from the, the, the base station is in my basement. So that's going through two floors, pretty good. Now, your mileage is gonna vary on that depending on how crowded your wireless is in the area, as well as how big your house is and what your house is constructed of. So my house is just like a, a drywall wood construction. We don't have any tile or anything. So I think that's part of the reason I was able to go so far. Your, your mileage is gonna vary in all your situations, but at least in my case, very impressed with the range of this. The battery life is 16 hours, which was really good. Uh, I tested it a few times and it came out very close to 16 hours. It charges in about four to five hours. Can't complain about that at all. I usually only charge this every two, three days of using it, a um, few hours each day. So it's, it's great. Uh, microphone quality seems to be good. I will leave that test as another video. Uh, general comments though from people I play with is, hey, what's your mic? I wanna get that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's good for voice chat wouldn't use it for anything beyond that probably I, I don't think you should record your vocals or podcast on this but you know or, or your new hit single but it's good for what it's made for which is chatting in games so very happy about that I also have a very loud mechanical keyboard and it seems to deaden that sound pretty good for people so overall very happy with this the warranty was good on this too so I actually had to use it the first month I had it um, the voice and the game balance paddle wasn't working for me uh, at all. So I emailed Astro, they sent me a new headset, and then I put this in the box and sent it back. It was a very painless experience overall. Uh, the ticket took about 24 hours to answer. I think they shipped me the new headset. I think it took about two or three days to me. It was like UPS ground. And then I sent the new one back. It was very painless, very quick, and I love that. You know, problems will happen with your products. I'm more concerned about how companies stand behind them than if there was a problem in the first place. Because frankly, with how things work with manufacturing nowadays, they can't test every single product anymore. So I'm more worried about 
how they'll fix a problem when it comes up than if there's a problem in the first place. I, I know there's gonna be some disagreement there, but that's how I feel about it. So as far as the price, uh, it, it, I think this was $299, so it is pricey. This is a $300 headset. That's the only thing that makes me kind of hold back a full-hearted recommendation on this. So I gave it a, a three out of four. I think this is a really solid headset. I think it's really good, especially for those that bounce between Xbox and PC, since it supports both really well. Um, it would also be pretty good for movie watchers, actually, uh, just because it can decode an optical signal. So I think it's good for console owners and PC gamers. If you're just a PC gamer, that's where my recommendation starts getting a lot more hesitant. While I really love these, the, this headset, there's been some new options since I bought this from Corsair and some others that are cheaper. So uh, until I get my hands on those, I, you know, I'm a little hesitant in telling everyone to buy this. So j just keep that in mind. And, uh, but if you, like I said, if you've read the review and everything, I can, I can definitely recommend this, especially if you have $300 burning a hole in your pocket. It's a good headset. I just don't know if I can recommend it to everybody as the best value until I've tested some of those other headsets. So, uh, please, uh, support me on Patreon if you can. And, uh, I'm also going to put an Amazon affiliate link in here. If you click that and buy the product, shouldn't charge you any more, but it does give me a little bit of a kickback, which is nice. And then I can make more videos if you enjoy these. So thank you for spending your time and watching. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. I'll answer them as soon as I can. Thanks.